Hey everyone, welcome back to episode two of Saturdays are for the boy. It's me just putting my thoughts out on uh, on the YouTubes on college football since that's one of my biggest passions and it's something that just helps me get through the weeks really. Um, I'm going to start a little series uh, going through the best position groups and position players um, in college football coming into next year. I know it's super early, but there's lots of different things that I can go over throughout the offseason. So I'm going to start that this week. Um, I encourage you to, uh, if you happen to stumble across this, uh, let me know whether you agree or disagree with my opinions, because that's really all this is. It's my thoughts on college football. It's nothing professional. It's very much an amateur uh, amateur show. It's just me recording on my uh on my tablet, so um, I'd love to have a discussion if you happen to stumble across this. Um, I'm going to start out this series with my uh, my top five quarterbacks for 2019 in college football. Um, I'm going to start from five. I'm going to work my way down to my top quarterback for this college football season that's coming up in a, uh, six months about at this point. Uh, starting at number five, I'm going to go with Shea Patterson from Michigan. Um, the number one quarterback recruit in the country from a few years ago who went to Ole Miss, obviously transferred to Michigan after everything went down with Hugh Freeze and, and all of that stuff. We won't get into that, but he showed flashes last year. He clearly made Michigan a little bit better at offense. Um, a team that was Jim Harbaugh ground and pound, Stanford ground and pound, all of a sudden had a little bit more dynamic element to it where you could see them exploding for 30, 35 points in a game as opposed to just beating teams 20 to 9 or something like that, like the early years of Jim Harbaugh. He's a lot of fun to watch. He's pretty slippery. He's got a great receiving core coming back. Tariq Black will be there. Um, a couple other guys, Donovan Peoples-Jones. He's got weapons to work with, and he's in the Big Ten. He's probably the best quarterback in the Big Ten that's coming back. Trace McSorley's gone. Dwayne Haskins is gone. You know, he kind of stands alone as the guy in the Big Ten that could win a few games from Michigan, especially with their defense depleted. I look for Shea Patterson to have a big year as long as Jim Harbaugh lets them open it up a little bit. He's got the skill set. I hope it happens for him. Number four. This one's a little bit of a stretch. Probably the one that might create the most debate in my top five, but I'm going with Felipe Franks from Florida. He had under the radar an amazing touchdown interception ratio last year. I think it was the best in the SEC, actually, even better than two, about or at least on par with two in terms of touchdown interception. Dan Mullen we clearly know is pretty much a quarterback whisperer. Chris Leak and Tim Tebow at Florida as an offensive coordinator. Dak Prescott and Nick, Fitz, Nick Fitzgerald at Mississippi State as the head coach. Now Felipe Franks, this team could turn a corner at least on offense. I expect huge things out of Felipe Franks this year. I expect him to contend for all SEC honors, if not win it. The SEC right now is blessed with a few great quarterbacks, but I think that raw talent of Felipe Franks, that arm strength, that just enough mobility to get him through. Um, I, he's maybe not quite as smart and cerebral as Jake Fromm, but in the SEC East, I expect Felipe Franks to have one hell of a season. I'm going to put him as my number four quarterback in 2019 in college football. Number three, just ahead of him in the SEC, is actually Tua. And some people might be surprised to see Tua so low. He was clearly put down to earth by both Georgia and Clemson. Those elite defenses, they're elite. Those were two of the three or four best defenses in the country last year, and he was human against them. That's no knock, but he was very human against them. He had... he. I know he was injured against Georgia, but Jalen Hurts ran the offense maybe better than Tua in that SEC championship game. And then he he never got into any sort of rhythm against Clemson in the national championship game. 
he's still obviously as gifted as they come. He can diagnose defense. He has the arm strength. He is a future top 10 pick in the NFL draft. There is no doubt about that. But I do think there are two quarterbacks better than him. It's Alabama, which means a top three quarterback in the country still puts you as the number one or two team in the land just because of everything that Nick Saban's done. Tua's got the best wide receiving group in the country. Spoiler alert for a few weeks when I go through that, but Jerry Judy, Devontae Smith, and everybody else on that wide receiving core is insane. He can just throw it up there and, and expect them to come down with it, which helps him a lot. I'm putting Tua at number three because I think the top two guys are just slightly better either because they're naturally better or because they have that experience that's going to make them better. With number two, this is the guy I'm going that's a little bit naturally better than Tua, and that's the guy who beat him in San Francisco in Levi's Stadium, Trevor Lawrence at Clemson. I think he's the number one pick if he comes out today. Um, obviously, the rules don't apply to him right now because he was just a freshman a freshman last year. I can't believe it. I live in South Carolina right now. I work with a bunch of Clemson grads, and I am tired of hearing of Trevor Lawrence, to be quite frank. But he has earned that. He is so cerebral. He is so smart. He's got all the talent in the world. He's tall. He's accurate. He's everything you could ever want in a quarterback. He's a guy that makes the entire offense better because of what he can do. I'm not sure there's another quarterback in the country that defenses are going to have to respect more than Trevor Lawrence. That doesn't make him the number one on my list this year, but what that does is that makes him the number one player when it comes to what I think would be future pro success. He's that good. He's scary. I would not want to deal with him. Um, he plays in the ACC, which is a little watered down. But he ripped Clemson to shreds. I'd like to see a little bit more challenge to him in terms of a team getting on him or him having to come from behind. The only time Clemson came from behind last year was Syracuse, and he was out of that game. I'd like to see under true pressure what he might do. But he, to me, is clearly a top-two quarterback in college football this year. And number one... I'm going to do it. I'm going to I'm going to say Justin Herbert from Oregon. I say that for a couple reasons. One, he's a senior. He's been through everything. He's been hurt. He's come back. He's clearly smart. He's got the arm talent. You watch him and he has the capability of just picking people apart. It's amazing to watch him pick people apart when he's on his game. And I really do think that experience matters a little bit. As long as he's got a little bit of a supporting cast, which I think he does, he's going to be excellent. In a Pac-12 that usually produces great quarterbacks, they're probably a little bit down this year. Stanford doesn't have a guy that jumps out at you. USC doesn't have a guy that jumps out at you. Um, UCLA doesn't have a guy. Justin Herbert has the chance to really put Oregon back on the map after a couple down years. I, I think he is going to end up being the top pick in next year's draft. I think that's because he is the best quarterback. He's the best quarterback in the country. His team might not be the best team in the country, but that's no fault of his. A couple years ago when he was healthy, Oregon went something like 7-1. and one. When he was hurt, they went like 1-4 and four. last year. None of their lapses were his fault. The defense is still getting a little bit better. Um, Justin Herbert is one hell of a player. I put him as the top quarterback in the country. I'm shocked he didn't come out this year. Uh, he's going to have competition with Tua to be the number one pick in the draft, but he is a heck of a player. I love watching him. I think the way Mario Cristobal uses him and – the way the Oregon offense is designed now with that sort of spread power run, he doesn't have to be Dennis Dixon 
He doesn't have to be Marcus Mariota necessarily in terms of scrambling ability. He just needs to be strong and confident. I would worry more about facing Justin Herbert's in Oregon offense than any other quarterback. So that's why I have him at number one. Um, I want to put one caveat in here. If Mackenzie Milton wasn't hurt, he would be in my top five. I think he's a heck of a player. I just don't know what's going to happen to him. I don't know if he's going to be healthy enough for 2019. Even if he is healthy, that type of injury is really scary for a quarterback of, of Mackenzie Milton's skill set. So I can't put him in my top five. Otherwise, he would be. Um, Mackenzie Milton, obviously, for you, UCF. So there are my top fives. There are a few sleepers that could sneak in there. Adrian Martinez for Nebraska could have a breakout year. Nate Stanley for Iowa is a really good player. Um, Deontay Thompson from Mississippi State's a very good player. Uh, Shane, or not Shane Buschel, I'm sorry. Um, Sam Ellinger from Texas. I don't, Shane Buschel is gone, but Sam Ellinger from Texas. And then obviously all those transfers, whether it's Jalen Hurts at Oklahoma, Kelly Bryant at um, Missouri, Justin Fields at Ohio State, even Jacob Eason at Washington, or Hunter Johnson at Northwestern. Those guys are all five-star quarterbacks coming out of high school. I haven't seen enough of them, and they're in a new system. I don't know what's going to happen. Quarterbacks are very interesting this year and will be in the future because of this transfer situation. But my top five for 2019, number five, Shea Patterson, Michigan. Number four, Felipe Franks, Florida. Number three, Tua from Alabama. Number two, Trevor Lawrence, Clemson. And my top quarterback is Justin Herbert from Oregon. Thank you guys so much for listening to me. Hopefully I didn't bore you too much. I'm sure that people have different opinions than me. I'm happy to listen to them, talk about it. I love discussing this stuff. Um, so let me know what you think. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Uh, just don't don't attack me personally. It's just it's just a regular old college football fans' opinion on this stuff. So thank you so much for listening to Saturdays or for the boy and watching me here on YouTube. And I will see you next week with the top five running back groups in the country. Bye.